next weekend. So as you know, we are studying from the book of Hebrews, specifically Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 is our anchor verse, but we're talking about the forerunners of Christ and how they point to Christ. And uh, the specific person that I will look at today is Abraham. Abraham is known as the father of faith, correct? He is the father of faith. So far, we've talked about some people like Abel and Noah. While they are important, the person who is most relevant to a child of God is Abraham because he had a tough, tough decision to make. He had to go through many things like we go through in our daily lives. When someone is said to be the father of something, it implies that that person is an important figure in the origin or the early history of that thing, like the father of modern medicine or the father of electronic engineering. So just like that, there is the father of faith, and that is Abraham. It is impossible to talk about faith or this topic without mentioning this person, and so such a person is Abraham. Hebrews 11, uh, they talk about different people, but one of the most important persons to talk about is makes up many different scripture portions within chapter 11 that we will try to go through within the limited time. So uh, Abraham is very uh, practical for us because he had a relatable faith that is applicable to us uh, because he demonstrated his faith in action. He demonstrated it by responding to the call of God in his life uh, when uh, in Hebrews, uh, sorry, in Genesis chapter um, 12 and the end of chapter 11, we see that there is a, a specific uh, transplantation that happens. We know that there is uh, many uh, years between uh, the Tower of Babel uh, or, or falling, about 200 years until the time uh, Abraham uh, is uh, going through this particular situation. So we see that Haran, uh, uh, Terah, the father of Abraham, is, and along with all the people, were worshiping false gods. Terah was a maker of false idols, right? So all, at that time, it was not easy to step out in faith like this. Many much, very much like the time now when there's all kinds of false worship and false idols going on in the time of Terah, for such a time as this is when Abraham had to step out in faith, responding to God's call. We see that, that he was from the Ur of the Chaldees, but at 70 years of age, his father Terah, as well as uh, Abraham and Sarah, as well as his nephew, whose father had died, uh, Lot, has set out from Ur of the Chaldeans, and they are now going to a different place. They are in Haran. And as they're going through uh, Haran at the age of 75, after five years of being there, uh, there is a voice that comes to Abraham, and that is seen in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, Abram was his name at the time, and we'll get into that, Get out of your country and, and from your family and from your father's house and to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And, it, uh, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Anybody know what the meaning of the word Abraham is? Or the meaning of the word Abram? See, Abram meant exalted father, exalted father. So what a coincidence, you might think. He's now 75 years old, and God is telling him that he will make him the father of many nations, and his name means exalted father, but he has no children of his own, no children of his own. And then God changed his name to a far greater title that said, you will be the father of many nations. 
and your generations will be like the stars in the sky and the sand in the beach, right? So that is numerable. So there was this promise upon the life of Abraham, and Abraham believed it by faith. He responded to the calling of God. He was willing to live in a strange land and in the waiting from the time that God told him at 75, he had to wait another 25 more years before the promise was fulfilled in the birth of Isaac. And so we see that he had to wait a long 25 years. And then in the sacrifice of Isaac, which we will focus on today. So just like many of us, God has taken us from a different land to this land. And uh, we have responded to the call of God. Uh, we are living uh, as foreigners and strangers in a land waiting for a new heaven, new Jerusalem. And we are uh, on earth living in a strange land as well. We are waiting for many prayer requests, many promises of God to be fulfilled in our life. And many times God asks us for the most precious thing in our life to test us and says, what is your Isaac? Are you willing to give it up? So the story of Abraham and his faith is very much something that we can all relate to in our life. It is very practical and different things that you would, he would have gone through from chapter 11 all the way to chapter 22. We identify with Abraham and that's why he is known as the father of faith. We know specifically when we go to chapter 22 because of the time I don't have to go I don't have the time to go into every detail but we'll go to chapter 22 of the book of Genesis. In chapter 22 now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him Abraham and he said here I am. And then he said now take your son your only son Isaac whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer for him uh, offer him there as a burnt sacrifice burnt offering on the mountain of which I shall tell you we are very familiar with the story now we know that God he had waited 25 long years for this child named Isaac and now God who said that you will be uh, the father of many nations is testing Abraham remember that Abraham did not know this was a test now, in retrospect, many thousands of years later, we know it was a test of the Lord. But Abraham just heard a voice that said, go sacrifice your only beloved son, Isaac. And so what did Abraham do? Abraham could have talked two things. He said, God is a very fickle God. Maybe uh, he has changed his mind or he could have thought that way. Or he could have thought God will provide, right? God has a way. Even if uh, he... Uh, wanted me to kill him, he would raise him up. And so that, that the latter interpretation is what I believe Abraham took by the faith of the long 25 years of experience he had from his call and his name being changed from Abraham, Abram to Abraham, and that the promise exists that through this child there will be many, many nations that come through, uh, and not just nations, but Abraham might have known about the birth of the Messiah, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the lineage of Isaac. And so Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him, as well as Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. You see a few things underlined there. Uh, and I think you get the point. You see many similarities the donkey two people the wood then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off and Abraham said to his young men stay here with the donkey the lad and I will go yonder and worship and what is uh, the essence of his faith he doesn't say I will come back to you but he says we we will come back to you words of faith words of faith that understood that even if God were to actually have him go through with this and cut his head that the Lord was able to resurrect Isaac from the dead 
the faith of Abraham. If you go on to the next verse, you can see, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. You see the offering laid upon his son. You see that he had a knife to hurt him, uh, and two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, here I am, my son, he said. Look, the fire and the wood is here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And what spoke to me the most was the words that Abraham used. Abraham said, my, God, my son, God will provide for himself a lamp for a burnt offering. So those two of them went together. If you look at that, it says God will provide for himself a lamp for a burnt offering. I wonder how much uh, by the eyes of faith Abraham was seeing 2,000 years later when the Savior of the world, God himself, the God-man Jesus would come down in the form of a man and there would be a solution provided on that same mountain because Mount Moriah is Golgotha or Mount Calvary. Amen. If you look at the history or go to Israel, that is the same mountain, the mountain uh, that, that God would provide. So our topic is to look unto Jesus through Old Testament saints. And if you look at this sacrifice of Isaac and Jesus, we can see so many similarities. 30-odd similarities are there. Both, both of their births were prophesied, but both of their mothers questioned it. We see that Jesus' mother said, I have never known a man. How could this be? And we know that the mother of Isaac, Sarah, said, I am too old to have a child. I've already gone through menopause. How is this possible? So both were prophesied. Both were impossible births. Without a miracle, it could not have happened. Both of them were the first child of both these women. God intervened in a miraculous way for the conception of both. Uh, we see that God was at play in both of their births. Both were mocked by their own kindred. Both were be well beloved of their fathers. Both acknowledged that they are the only begotten son, as we read earlier. Even though there was Ishmael and many other children later, uh, there is this acknowledgement of Isaac as the only, uh, your only beloved son, the son whom you love. And what did the word of God say about Jesus, the only beloved son of the father? Uh, we see that both fathers were aware uh, or what was made known to them to the particular sacrifice they were supposed to do. And both sons were willing to go through with this. We see that Isaac, and I was talking to my kids, they thought that Isaac was a kid, but Isaac was likely a teenager or a young man when this happened. And Isaac had a big role in this. Isaac could have slithered off and he could have gotten off of the sacrifice, but Isaac was willing to obey his father and stayed on that altar. And we see that the Lord Jesus, even though he said, if it is possible, take this cup from me, he went through with it. We see three days journey uh, in the travel of Abraham as we read. And we see that Jesus from the time of the cross to his resurrection was three days. We see two men accompanied them both. We have uh, uh, two men that took them to Moriah and waited. And we see two people crucified with Christ on the cross of Calvary. We see um, that in verse 11 and 12, we see this particular saying that says, when Abraham was ready to cut uh, the neck of his son. See, Abraham did not know how God would provide, but he had already spoken the words and said, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. He was talking about the current situation, and prophetically he was talking about what would happen 2,000 or years later, and uh, many thousands of years later, we see that Abraham, Abraham was a voice that was likely heard from a pre-incarnate Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ in the Christophany or pre-incarnate Christ was speaking to Abraham and the test was now passed. He had now achieved great marks and saying, you're willing to go through with this. You love me so much. You have faith in me so much that you're willing to go through with this. And there was a ram caught in the thicket by its horn. 
what kind of similarity that it was a thorn bush with a uh, ram caught in the thicket and our Lord Jesus had to wear the crown of thorns uh, on his head. We see that a ram is nothing but an adult lamb and at that time there was a substitution that took place and Isaac's life was spared and we see that there was a ram prepared for uh, for the sacrifice that was to take place. But in, instead, many years later, the Father God went through with the sacrifice that the beloved Son that came into this earth died on the cross, and he went through uh, with that. And there is uh, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ that not only won the victory over sin, but over death and over shame. And I have the victory through the death that the Lord achieved each and every person sitting here has a victory through the uh, achievement of the Lord Jesus on that cross and all of our songs were about that this morning amen so there is a literal as well as a figurative resurrection that happens right see the words of the father the words of the father uh, were that uh, there was going to be a resurrection Abraham said even if, I were, even if he were to die, I believe that God can resurrect him. And so we see that there is a figurative resurrection of Isaac that takes place. And there is a literal resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Three days uh, on, uh, on, on a Sunday morning, he had resurrected from the dead after he had gone through the cross and the excruciating pain. We see that... Uh, there were, that the, both fathers have many sons afterwards. Abraham gets married uh, and has many other sons. Uh, but we see that our Lord Jesus, according to the word of God, takes many sons through glory, through his sacrifice on the cross. We see that um, Eliezer is then, um, uh, uh, the word Eliezer means God is my help. And he was put into action by the father to find a suitable bride for his son. And what happened? We see that Eliezer went and found Rebekah as a bride for Isaac. God is our helper. The Holy Spirit is here as our helper today. The Holy Spirit is here. And there is going to be a wedding supper of the Lamb coming up. And we are the bride, church. We will be like the Rebekah. And we are in our waiting phase there is Eliezer or the Holy Spirit to help us. Amen. So Jesus Christ upon Galilee saw God. Uh, we see God uh, through this. Uh, Jesus Christ through the story of Abraham and Isaac. And I don't know how much Abraham knew at the time. The parallels that were to take place. We see also historically. And I've done some research on it. The same place where Moriah was on that same mountain is where Solomon built the temple uh, for worship. The Golden Dome is, right? And that is also adjacent to the place, the same place essentially on that mountain that Golgotha or Calvary is. Jesus offered his life as a substitute for the remission of mankind's sin and gained the victory over death, sin, and shame. That is the gospel of the good news. To, that needs to go to the ends of the earth. The Lord Jesus has given us that commission. And that, that same mountain where he was ascended on the Mount of Olives, which is also right there in Jerusalem, there is going to be a day when he will come down and put his feet and split open Mount Olives. And the Lord will come back for his bride. Just like Eliezer, the Holy Spirit is preparing each and every heart here to be the bride of Christ, how are we responding? So Jerusalem, thousands and thousands of years, has been the redemptive center of history. And verse 23 of chapter uh, 22, it talks about the prospects of a bride, and we will be that bride of Christ. So just like Abraham and Sarah there is Isaac, a son of promise. The Lord Jesus was that son of promise. And everyone who has faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is free from the power of sin and is accepted by God and become the children of Abraham. And we have the victory through that. Amen. As I'm concluding, I would ask the worship team to come up. 
the time today was shorter, so let me have the worship. Oh, there's no worship team, sorry. There's no worship team. Uh, so for conclusion, let me, I recently saw a song uh, in 2023 that was written by Grace Esther NG, uh, right? Uh, and this was like this. To the land of Moriah, Abraham took his son. At the word of Elohim, he said, here I am, I will go. He split the wood for the offering and laid it on his son of promise, whom on his shoulder he would bear to the place where he'd be slain. His son said, Abba, where is the lamb for the offering? And he said, my son, the Lord will provide. He's my only son, my only son. He's the one that I love. I offer up to you, Adonai. And we see that upon that Mount Moriah, an altar that he had built, Abraham stretched out his hands to slay out his beloved son, to slay his beloved son. And the angel of the Lord cried out, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hand upon him. See, the lamb will take his place. See, the lamb will take his place. And I, the title that I gave this sermon uh, was appropriate as well. If you would put up the title, the lamb will take his place. His son said, Abba, see the lamb for the offering. And he said, my son, the Lord will provide. And then on that same very mountain, many thousands of years later, the son of man was lifted up on the cross of Calvary. And the father turned his face away. And his only begotten son, the lamb of God, was slain to fulfill what his father had promised that, that, that the Lord will provide for himself. The Lord provided for himself. And that is the gospel message we have for the world. And for each one of us to be strong. We don't have to be afraid. As long as we have faith in the Lord Jesus. He has already done the victory on the cross of Calvary. And we need to believe in it and go forward. Here's my son. Here's my son. Here's the one that I love. I offered him up for you. Whom I love. I've given him for you. Because of love. I've, got, I've given him over to you, Yeshua, Yeshua. He died on the cross, and the story of Abraham and Isaac teach us to look unto the cross where the Lord Jesus died for our sins. May God bless you all with these words.